All right, guys, buckle up and let's go on a journey where I ramble a lot about my favorite genre of books, memoirs. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sofia and I make videos about books and other things sometimes, uh, but mostly books. And this video is part of a series called the five books recommendation in which I recommend five books of a specific sort, genre, author, whatever, just a similar theme within those books. And I bring the recommendations to you. In today's video, we're finally talking about memoirs. I've been wanting to do this one for such a long time and um, I'm finally doing it. So let's jump right into the five books I want to share with you. Little disclaimer here. I read a lot of memoirs. I think it's the genre of books I read the most. Okay. Well, yeah, I read a lot of novels as well, but like I really, really enjoy memoirs and I have so many books I want to share with you. This is why I think this is there's gonna be a part two probably. Um, but uh, the five books I will share with you today exclude two of my favorite books of all times. So if you've been here long enough, you would know what I'm talking about. Before I jump into the five books list, I need to give a shout out to those books. I absolutely have to because otherwise it just feels wrong, you know? So yeah, these books are here you go. So we have A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway and Just Kids by Patti Smith, which is my favorite books of all time. It's just, it's just my favorite books of all time. And for both these memoirs, I have full on reviews, which I will link here and you can just go there and watch them and understand why I love them so much. And they're so worth it. And I think you should go and read them. Uh, and I hope I'm not typing this so much because obviously I know that the things I like you don't necessarily have to like, but I think these are really good. I don't know, do you think so? Have you read them? Help me out in the comments if you have. And now jumping into the list, the first book I want to talk about is Educated by Tara Westover. Now, I've already spoken about this one briefly. It was in one of my year's favorites. I think it was in my 2020 favorites. Um, but this is about Tara Westover, who was brought up in a Mormon uh, family in Utah, in the US. Um, super conservative Mormons that believe in the end of days and live, um, you know, they, they don't have any papers, they don't go to the hospital, they don't go to schools. So, really a hardcore Mormon lifestyle. Uh, but Tara always felt that something was wrong with her abusive siblings and um, parents, in some cases, mostly father. Um, and she decided to actually break out of that sort of cycle and go get an education and she ends up getting a terminal degree so she gets a PhD from Cambridge and this, this book is all about the power of education. It highlights education as your ultimate tool to move from one life walk path situation to another and getting you out of darkness and the sort of enlightenment that comes when one actually gets an education and this can be any sort of education, formal, informal, in this case it happened to be I would say a mixture of both but mostly formal within a university institutions and I love this book because I'm also a person that believes that education is key it really gives you intellectual freedom and thus freedom in general and that's just so powerful um, and I love it and please go and read it it's really good next we have a very interesting memoir because it's not your typical sitting down and talking about your life but talking about a specific journey or adventure that you went through and that is Stasiland stories from behind the Berlin Wall by Anna Funder now I know that this might not really fall into the category of memoir as your typical uh, memoir because we do we don't really follow the life of Anna Funder she is actually Australian she's an Australian journalist and she travels to Germany with a focus on um, the eastern or the ex-eastern part of Germany, the GDR, the German, the German Democratic Republic, and she goes there and meets people who were part of the GDR before 
and speaks to them and documents their journey and at the same time she documents her own journey from Australia to Germany and speaks about her meeting these people so instead of just editing the stories together and giving us this collection of essays or maybe collection of fragmented collective memories she does the job of also speaking about her way going and meeting these people and finding them and all the research work that went into that and I loved it because the result is stunning. I also have a full review of this book which I will leave somewhere around the screen. Okay guys, the third one. Shoot me please. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I had to include another Patti Smith book. Mm, this one is I'm Trained by her. She's just so good. She's one of my favorite contemporary writers and artists. She's also a singer, by the way. You know, she's the one that sings the very famous night. Um, because the night belongs to the lovers. Because the night belongs to us. Here I am singing again, even though I said in one previous video that you would never see me sing again here. <laughs> okay, M Train is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I love how a lot of this book has to do with the coffee and going to cafes and being creative and producing your creative work in cafes. So she literally takes us with her from the cafes, um, a cafe she always goes to in New York City, close to where she lives. And we're taken to Mexico, to France. And as we go to all these places with her, um, she goes to all these cafes and she just talks about how it feels to sit down with a blank sheet of paper um, and a coffee in a table you know, in a cafe you know, or in a table you don't know, in a cafe you don't know, and just write. Um, and it's amazing because we also travel with her to Mexico, as I said, um, to um, I think the somewhere around the co in the coast around uh, around New York maybe the Hamptons no yeah it's the New York's far uh, rockaway uh, and we just follow her journey again and it's documented with her beautiful beautiful uh, polaroids very famous she always includes those polaroids and uh, it's a dream exploration, like you don't know if she's talking about real life or, or a dream in a typical Patti Smith way. And it's amazing. I love this book so much. It's a lovely memoir and this is list. Her books are amazing, like matchy matchy. I love this book so much and I love Patti Smith, which you actually should follow on Instagram because she has such a great creative Insta page, which is amazing. And you can also have access to, to some of her writings there. Okay, book number four. Are we excited? Because this one I've never, I've never spoken about. Um, this is Artful by Ali Smith. Oh, do you see what I did here? Do you see? Smith, Smith. <laughs> this, I don't know why I have not spoken about this book before here, but this book was, is probably one of my all time favorites as well. This is amazing. Ali Smith is a very famous um, British author. This book, explores time, books and literature, and grief. So the author, or the protagonist here, we don't know if it's her. So the author here had lost her partner, who was a writer, an essayist, and a philosopher. And she documents her grief, uh, or her grief in, um, after he passed away. And there is such an emphasis on grieving through art, and in her case, through books and literature while exploring the passing of time. So it's full of philosophical references, of literary references. I remember a lot of references to Oliver Twist for some reason. Um, she speaks about books a lot. They are beautiful pas passages about books and how they relate to time. I think there's, there's one that I'm gonna read to you because I really, I think sometimes a book just can speak for itself, right? Books themselves take time, more time than most of us are used to giving them. Books demand time. Sometimes they take and demand more time than we're ready to yet know how to grant them. They go at their own speed, regardless of the cultural speed or slowness of their readers' zeitgeists. Plus, they're tangible pieces of time in our hands. We hold them for the time it takes to read them and we move through them and measure time passing by how far through them we've got what the page age correlation or percentage if we're using a digital if we're using a digital reader between the beginning and the end also they travel with us they accompany us through from our past into our futures 
always with their present tense ability. They are soon as they are open for words to act like the notes heard in music do, marking from word to word the present moment, always in reference to what went before, what's on its way, in a phrase, a sentence, a paragraph, a section, a chapter. How beautiful is that? This is this whole book. So go please and pick it up. It's so beautifully done. And still, the language is not very difficult. The language itself is not difficult. Um, the ideas might be, so you have to read it with a lot of patience and really give your mind into it. But it's so worth it. It's so good. Last but definitely not least. <laughs> this book I just read. I just finished a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the second pick for my book club, which you should definitely join, uh, which is Stories from Palestine, where we read books uh, from Palestinian authors about Palestine, um, portray in Palestine, and this is the second book, so we didn't have the live yet. Um, I think by the time this video would be posted, we would have it, or have it, like, on the verge of having it. <sighs> this book. Okay, let me tell you what's the book first. This book is I Saw Ramallah by Murid Barghouti. Now, the original is in Arabic, which I wish I read, but I don't know if I would have enjoyed it as much as I did in English. Guilty. Arabic is my, matter, my, <laughs> my native language, my mother tongue. Uh, but in literature, enjoyment comes differently. <laughs> um, but regardless, thanks to Ahdaf Suhaif, we have the translation in English. This is stellar. Now it's in my top five of all time favorites. Now the writing in this book is beyond anything I've read. Every single sentence feels like a poetry verse. Understandable. Maurice Borghuti is a poet. He's known as a poet. And by the way, I he just passed away in last February. I, I just googled him for some reason because I just loved him and I was like, how come I've never read his poetry? And I found that he just passed away. I was really sad because this a piece <laughs> Okay, what is it about? So, um, Murid Barghouti is a Palestinian who has been displaced, exiled, of course, <laughs> from Palestine. Uh, and all his life he's been living around, sometimes in Egypt, sometimes in Jordan, sometimes in Hungary, sometimes in Tunisia, a bit in Morocco, just going from one place to another in a typical Palestinian refugee type of way. And in 1996, he's granted a permit to finally go back to Ramallah, which is his home city. So he grew up in a small village called Dar Ghassan, close to Dar Ghassan, I think. Close to, um, is it Dar Ghassan or Dar Ghassan? It doesn't matter. Um, so a village close to the city of Ramallah. And um, when he was exiled, he was really young and he could never go back there. And in 1996, he finally gets that permit from Israeli authorities to cross a Jordan River a bridge and then go to Ramallah. And that's what he's documented. And, oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, thanks God it won the Nagib Mahfoud medal for literature. And I think it should definitely have won more stuff because this is one of these very important accounts that I think will stand the test of time and really be a super important document of history and whatever, however things are gonna go in the future and gonna be in the future, this would be important work and good work and beautifully written work. I learned so much about the war of 1968, about the Nakba, about the politics of um, of Egypt in that time, about the Six Days War, about so much, all while reading a beauty, a beauty of a literary piece. I hope I did it justice for you and that you're gonna go and pick it up because you really should. <laughs> Please guys, do. And to all my non-Arabs viewers and friends who are still confused about this whole thing and still think that it's some elite topic or elite conflict, it is not. There is written there are written accounts that you can pick up and read from people who have been through that, not from us. Let's say you don't want to hear about us. Hi Petrushka, sorry. Let's say you don't want to hear about us. Oh, you don't want to hear about the conflict from us. Because we're not there, obviously. So, I guess what I'm trying to say <laughs> with all of this is that this is great and you should read it. And that's it. <laughs>
Okay guys, these are the five beautiful, wonderful books I am recommending for uh, memoirs. So I think there is a little bit of something for everyone. Okay, so let me know if you count any memoir within your favorite books and yeah, just leave the title for me in the comments down below and I would be so happy to check it out. Also guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram right here and until next time, have fun, read great books, stay grateful,